Telemann de Grosco, so brate, Gibosco, so de Brete, Brigade Dosco, so de Brata Gabasco, so de Gar, Brigade Deski, Zelemann de Grodosco, so de Brate, Massata Labradosco, so de Brate, Brigade de Gibosco, so de Grodoski, Brata, Baracatiasco, Brate, Gede Gibosco, so de Grodoski, Massata Labrade Gibosco, so de Brete, E. Crasco, Zabari Cabascasa, Migre Tegi, Ske Bractus, Calaman de Great de Gere, Bosco Roca. E crafto salaman de gradia brados que se de grete de bosco se de grete e prata cabacus ca salaman de greta baracatu as cos e prate e crescu zaman se de gre zele brados que bractos que bracta cabacura catis salaman do gros que se bracte e crescu zaman sata la brade zele cretos que rata la man do gros que paruca brados calabra de getesque be grecu zamara grade que mosco sole brade que te Rabakuta Krada Kabakus que se le cretegi masco solo cretegi que prata la mando grosso sole brade que tea Rabakus calabra de le gretes que se mando grotos que se prate e prado solo brade le gretis camasira grata la mano cratisca Rabakus que le brade le gretes que se mando grotos cos brade le grades la mando gradula cratias casale gretes e prado se mase cretos que rebacus que le bratus que le mante crete cos bregotos que prata Bacuscas, be grescus e bracte que bosco solo crate que bascasa, rabacata la mando grotos que bracte, e brados que mas secretus e maracrate la maruca basquisa le cretesque, e recatusca bracte que le catusque ne mas secretos que me grescus e bracte que bosco solo crate que de, e bratos a la mate regedisca, randa cabarus que le brados que ne mandi gratus que ne neric, y crascus e bracte, e brato la mate grabarus que se bracte rapacus que bractos que le bradi la manu cretes que se le cretus que me crescu se masse te le bradu la cratica bacus que rapacus que le bractus que le cretica bacus que la mandi cretus que y crascu sa la brade le catula mare cretis casada brata cabacus que se cretis cada mando grotos que e bractos a la mati grabascu sa la cretes que se rapacus que la mande cretos que le pratica tele mature cretea recatus que le Cretis co sale mane cretes era pa catula cretes i crascuse ma se de crete que des que o pratos co lo prate que es que se mature cretele ri pa cus que le ma se de crete e pratos co sole prate que des me cretus e prate que va cus que le mantoro crotos que e prate que des que e praton de cabala pratus que la mante cretes ri pa cus que le prate que te le va de gabas roco to lo prate que vos co sole me que se le prados co sa mante que vas cus Brade brade que te le mature brade brate que ti sale mature e crescusa ma si cretiga ripa cusca le brade le mature crete que di mascuse de cretea rapa cusca la mante que te esques me crescusa brate o brata la manto grotos que brate que bosco se le cretis me cresquisa ma se te crete repa cusca le mante le brato cusca se e bratos coso le brate que basca sa de crete rapa cusca le mando grotos coso me gretos coso le brate que basco sa Ne gritos con solo brate que bosco se le grate cabas casar, maca con solo todo cosa, rip solo, me gritos con solo brate que bosco solo que se le grate que se. You are highly lifted up, there is no one like you. Hale, 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 do ya. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Hallelujah. Hale, 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 do ya. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you, hallelujah, Halle, 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 hallelujah. Jehovah, you are the most high, Jehovah, you are the most high, God, Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. 
Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, hey, Adizena. Oh, you are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Hallelujah! 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 Go inside and go inside my card and I give my testimony. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Now. Good afternoon, all sisters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, sister, sister Nkechi, it's not only women that are online, though. There are men too, sister Nkechi. <laughs> I said, nobody is sick in my house. So, she keep looking at me. He said, 
I, I, he's not feeling it. I said, I'm not feeling anything. So I just uh, cover myself with the uh, with blood of Jesus. I said, nothing is wrong with me. I just got home and I just rest and sleep. So that's why I couldn't go last night uh, uh, Bible study because I said, probably I needed to rest a little bit. So after the worship from 8 to 9, then I went to bed. So this morning I'm at work now. Amen. Thank God. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Nkechi. God bless you, Sister Nkechi. It's a good thing that you you refused it. You know, how can somebody just labor sickness on you? Is it not amazing, brothers and sisters? These doctors are, it is, you, you people are the cause of it. You are the ones going to meet them. You are the ones, what is, what are you checking off for? What is wrong with you? <laughs> who knows the, who knows your body more than you? Brothers and sisters, think about it. Who knows your body more than you? And then you say you are going for checkup. One person who does not even know even the food you ate this morning. He's telling you so, so, so thing is wrong with you. You see, it is your fault because you are the one submitting yourself to them. And now, uh, Osi, are you saying that there is something wrong going for checkup? There is nothing wrong going for checkup. But the question is this. Okay, since you have been going for checkup, what good report have you really received? Brothers and sisters, we need to be mindful. Christians think, some Christians think that it sounds fashionable. When the... When the... Uh, when they go for checkoffs, it's not fashionable at all. It's even a shame. Please, if, if you if you if you ever meet me face to face, for as many of you who, who have never met me before, and they tell you that that is OC sitting, and you want to talk about going to see your doctor, please don't don't let me hear you. Just respect yourself. Go somewhere else and sit, so that we don't get to hear you. And even if you go into the bathroom to go and say, the Lord may tell us. And we will laugh at you. What do you mean going to see? What are you doing with the anointing in your life? You are going to meet one doctor. The doctor that even needs help. Somebody went to meet a pastor and said, Pastor, you need insurance. The pastor said, I should be the one to even insure you. The man said, what do you mean? He said, because I already have an assurance. He said, what is the assurance? What is the name of the assurance? He said, I have blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. You, what do you have? He says, you are, you are representing an organization that will soon sack you. You work for an insurance company. He said, for me, I already have an eternal assurance that I will go to heaven. So I'm the one insuring people, giving them eternal life. You, you are, you are, you are saying you want to go. It's amazing what many Christians go for. Any small thing, insurance, insurance. Well, it's up to you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Brothers and sisters, if you must do great things for God, you must think differently. If God is going to, ever going to use you, if God is ever going to use you, you must be dangerous in your thinking. You must sit, you must make up your mind to start seeing things the way God sees them. Amen. 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 Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, is that Sister oh Uzo? Okay. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. This testimony is really, I don't know how God did it, but he really did it for me. Thank God for Pastor C. I'm having the story in June. He's, in fact, mm -hmm. <laughs> God, I just thank you, Pastor C, for everything you've done for me and my family. It is the Lord okay, that's this, it. Goes this way. Um, I've been in a very abusive relationship for a while. So, I reached to a point that I said, you know what, I'm done. I just need a divorce. I just want to go. You know? I just want to do thing. And I, what, what, you know, I said, I pay my tithe. My pastor said, pay tithe. Like, God will the rewards or rebuke the poor for my sake. I, I paid my tithe. I'm not only, I've done everything. I prayed. God, this is the part for you to do. Do that the Lord. I want to do that the Lord to leave me. Because I'm not only, you know, sometimes you have to be aggressive in the spirit too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I know, you know, it's like, no, nothing is happening, and I'm like, oh, what do I do? So, let me just call that first day. Maybe I have to open up, and let's see me go by where this time. I told my first day, and finally, see what is happening, I'm sick, I'm tired of all this, you know, this problem, I just need to divorce. So, I said, you know, like, what are you telling me? Did you like him? I said, you know what? No, I don't like him. I was trying to fight my, you know, make my, 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 
to try to be happy. You know, I was like, you know, I don't want to, you know, like I said, uh, you right. That's it. And in my life, he gave me some words. He prayed with me. I said, don't worry, you just, you will see what God will do for you. I was like, okay, here he goes again. God to do it yes, for me. Let me wait for this God to do this thing for me because I know I'm not, <laughs> I'm not disobeying this time. So, um, in May, the third, my husband is that type that goes out, you know, he doesn't call, you know, he comes back anytime he wants. So, May 2nd, you know, my husband, he was running late, he called me, oh, I'm trying to come tell you, I'm running late, I'll be there very shortly. I said, this as well. Okay, oh. <laughs> he never came back. You know, he continued that way until last week. He was like, okay, um, I came back for work. You know, and my boss said that um, his wife, I should help him get a car for his wife. He gave me money to get a car for his wife. I said, okay, but can you help me choose? You know, I went to the car and I was okay, no problem. I know that women will like my spider, they will like children, they will like this, they will like that. You know, I was just helping him to choose a car. He said, oh, but the, he, he really mean that she would like this, then my boss wife would like this part And, the, you know, what of the column now? You know, the, the, he was trying to fight that, even know what was happening. I said, okay, the white is fine. Uh, me, I love white, so I believe that I'm not even white, I would like that I like anything white. He said, okay, that's it. Let me go and tell him, let's go home. Let's go, let me go and tell him what I saw. Maybe if he loves that, they'll buy it. Just two days ago, my husband gave me a cheek, a I was like, that is the cat car for my, my boss wife. I was Amen. Like, what? <laughs> Amen. I was like, what is going on? Am I cleaning or <laughs> I was like, wow. I have to talk for four days. I was like, oh my God, I'm really done with so. Amen. This was not in vain. He is really a God that has to touch prayer. So God has taught you. Even if your, your prayers didn't work today, tomorrow, next month, trust me. He is there. He knows. Amen. He just said to you to say, you're safe. Amen. So I believe that my God is real and he will do it again for me. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that good work which the Lord has begun in your life, ma, even in your marriage, the Lord has perfected it already in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, you, 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 oh, I... Does somebody want to say something? Brothers and sisters, that, that, that testimony... Is beautiful because you know how can you explain it? Somebody being in a in an abusive relationship where the husband abuses the wife, and all of a sudden the man changes, and now he's the one buying the wife a car. It's only the Lord can do that thing, and it's not as if he's doing it with a with an ulterior motive. No, he's being sincere about it. There's a change. Amen. We bless God for his for for what he's doing and. May the name of the Lord be forever glorified, even in your marriage, and in your life, and in the life of your children, forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. In fact, now you have even started enjoying the beauty of your marriage. You have not even seen anything yet. Every day shall always be best for you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, sister. <laughs> So, this is from Okay, so that was it. Um, um, I know you want us to do a quick one, but uh, praise God. Um, I don't know the name of the sister that has um, given the last testimony, but as soon as she opened her mouth to talk, um, it was in my heart. I was hearing patient, 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 even before. Initially, she first started talking about, um, trying to share the testimony. Yes. So, um, sister, I, I don't know, I, I keep hearing that word, patient. That patient, I, I have it throughout your testimony. Amen. I, like I wasn't, you know, I keep hearing patient. So, I just want you to pray over, this, you know, that God will give you the patient that you need in your marriage, in your home, in your Amen. life, in your ministry, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, if you can I share my quickly? Okay, go ahead, ma. In, in two minutes, ma. In one already... minute, your mind is, mind is God. I've been awesome. Okay. My first moments are so huge. But, but I know, I know, and I will still say it. 
sent very few to his foot to my house. I know that Jesus came to my house. Amen. And everything I call in my life, take away that somewhat peace in my life. Amen. There's so much more in my life. I can't even tell you what I'm just being. It's so much I'm telling you the glory Amen. and adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Ngozi, the Lord indeed visited you. And the Lord has come to stay in your home. He will never leave. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, in my life, in my young life, I've never been that honored before in my life. When I visited the Uno House family, I'm telling you, I've never been that honored before in my life. You know, and, um, and uh, of course, so many people have honored me. May the Lord bless you all in your own way. But I'm just saying the experience I had, you know, and uh, may the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 All right, let's look at what the Lord wants to share with us today. You know, we have been going through a series on tongues, speaking in tongues, and um, and um, the Lord has been teaching us great things about speaking in tongues and revealing the mysteries of speaking in tongues. How many of you learned something? If you learned something during those classes, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen, amen. We, we indeed learned so, so much. Amen. But today the Lord wants to teach us on the topic, the problem of knowledge. The problem of knowledge. Lord, we give you praise. Let's bow our heads and talk to the author of the book. Lord, we bow our heads, we give you praise. Adoration, majesty. Lord, teach us. Reveal secrets to us. Lord, May Jesus be forever glorified, even in these lessons today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's turn our Bibles to Genesis. The problem of knowledge. The reason why many Christians are where they are today is because of the knowledge that they have. That they have. Knowledge they have received in the past and the knowledge that they are receiving even today. And what makes the difference between a success and a failure in life is knowledge. Now, the problem is not necessarily even knowledge, because you have good knowledge and bad knowledge. It's even a greater calamity when you even have a Christian who receives good knowledge and yet is still miserable. And so the problem is no longer the knowledge itself. The problem, it is, the problem is now how that knowledge was received by the person. So the, we, 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 begin, we will look at how do you receive knowledge. But before we do that, we want to look at even knowledge in itself. Knowledge. You know, one of the problems a lot of people have, brothers and sisters, is the problem of knowing something that they never should have known as at the time they knew it. But it, was, but it was something they were supposed to know in the future and not the time that they knew that thing. That's also one of the major problems today that many Christians have. And in Psalm 11 verse 3, it says, If the foundation be faulty, destroyed, it says, What can the righteous do? So a righteous man can have a destroyed foundation. Knowledge. Knowledge. Please say that with me. Say knowledge. 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 Now in Genesis chapter 2. Please turn your Bibles there. All right, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2. Let's read from verses, verses 8 into verses 9. The Bible says, And God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now, brothers and sisters, the garden that the Lord planted is not called Eden. As many people call it, they say the Garden of Eden. The garden itself is a garden. 
But Eden is the place where the garden was. So if you are calling it the Garden of Eden, what do you mean by the Garden of Eden? It was a garden in a place called Eden. But that is not the name. The name of the garden was not called Eden. Please take note of that. Now verses 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verses 9. And out of the ground made the Lord grow, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Please, mark that word, every tree, mark that expression, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. He says it is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Most of the time we watch the TV and they advertise different menus. And I recall, before I came to America, I used to see those menus on magazines, watch it in movies. And I used to say to myself, ah, when I get to America, I will eat all this food. I will eat all this, I will eat all this food. And the first day I tasted one or such food, I spat it out. I said, what is this? They said, it's the food now. They said, it's the food now. I said, is this the one? I said, it's not. They said, that is it. They showed me the picture. I said, yes. They said, this is it. And I was looking at the food. That was exactly what it was. But it tasted differently. But it was good to my sight. It looked good to me. It was pleasant to my sight. But as far as I was concerned, it was not good for me as food. But I thought it was because it was pleasant to my sight. I'll never forget the story Bishop T.D. Jakes narrated. He said a guy took a lady out to dinner and then they, they gave her the menu. And then they said this is what they, are, they have on the menu. And then the guy chose what he would like to present to the lady uh, for the date, the special date. And then the lady now says she doesn't like it. Then... <laughs> Bishop T.D. Jake said, the guy asked the lady, have you tasted it before? The guy said, no. He said, so how come you now say you don't like it? She said, I just don't like it. Then Bishop T.D. Jake said, how can you say you don't like something you have never tasted before? Then T.D. Jake said, you must be a mongrel. For you not to have tasted something and then you just say you don't like it. And you know, that's the problem many Christians have. Have you heard some Christians talk about, have you, ever, have you ever heard people talk this way? Even Christians, they'll tell you, let me tell you something about New York. Have you heard people talk that way? You probably have heard them. Oh, let me tell you something about Jay-Z. How long have you lived in Jay-Z? Maybe 15 years. But how come you know everything about New Jay-Z? You say, I know everything about New Jay-Z. Who told you you are wrong? You don't know everything. Just because you know all the streets doesn't mean you know New Jay-Z. Or you know New York. Or you even know America. And particularly most of you who travel to your various countries. And when you are discussing and then somebody is arguing with you about America. And then you say, I live in America. I can tell you everything about America. How? What do you really know about America? You are just living in one of the closets in America. You think you know everywhere. Knowledge. Well, brothers and sisters, I see something now. In verses 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So it was the Lord that made all the trees in the garden to grow. True or false? True. And it was the Lord that made these trees to be pleasant to the sight and good for what? Food. It was God who did it. And then the Bible now says, there were just these two special trees also. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge, good and evil. Please mark that. And then look at how God watered the garden. The Bible says, And a river went out of Eden 
to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. Now, brothers and sisters, jump, jump now quickly to verses 15 of chapter 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So Adam was not made in the garden as many Christians think. Wherever Adam was made, only God knows. But God brought him from where he made him and put him inside the garden. And brothers and sisters, please take note what we read in verses 9. It was not Adam that said it was good to the sight. It was pleasant to the sight and good for food. It was not Adam that said so. It was God who saw it that way. It was God who saw it that way. That the trees that the Lord made to grow in the garden were pleasant to the sight and good for food. It was God who saw it that way. Then God now brought Adam and placed him in the garden and gave Adam a responsibility. The Bible says, And the Lord God took the man, verses 15, and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. Brothers and sisters. To dress it and to keep it. God took the man and put him in a particular place. Brothers and, brothers and sisters. Positioning. Where has God kept you? Where, God, where has God positioned you? Stay there. Don't move an inch. Because where he has kept you, he has given you a responsibility. The Bible says it was the Lord who brought the man and put him in the garden and gave him a responsibility to dress the garden and to keep it. Now, brothers and sisters, there's a reason why the Spirit of God is emphasizing this. That he put the man in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Now, there are ministers of God who preach... That the first responsibility God gave man is marriage. So they say, as a minister, take care of your marriage first before ministry. That is a miscarriage. It is a big spiritual blunder. It is not true. Notice here, there was no wife here. It was God who brought Adam first. And put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. There was no sign of wife in the picture. So as it were, when God called you into ministry, there was no wife there. So how come now as a minister, when you got married, your wife now became your ministry? You see the problem why you have ministers today who are having problems in their marriages? Because they put the marriage ahead of ministry. And that is a miscarriage. That is a miscarriage. Because if you actually marry the person that the Lord ordained for you to marry in ministry, you will never have any problem with marriage. Now, say something, brothers and sisters. Verse 15, And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man. This was the first time God spoke to the man. And commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. He didn't say you should pay for it. He didn't say you should pay for it. Many people today are paying for what they should eat. And if you are paying for what you should eat, it means that that is not what God planned for you. As it were, you are paying for a particular service that you ought to have been receiving freely. Then it is not God's plan for you. As it were, you are married to a woman that until you make her happy by giving her money every day, that's the only time you have peace in that marriage. It is not from God. You are paying for something you ought to be eating freely. Freely. 
as it were, the, the, you have to make your husband happy before he gives you attention. You are paying for what you should be eating freely. Then it is not from God. Brothers and sisters, no matter how good your plan is, it can never be better than the plan that God has for you. It can never be better. God always has a better plan. He has always had... See, brothers and sisters, many of us operate as though God has run out of ideas. God does not lack ideas at all. The Bible calls him the fountain of wisdom. There is none like God Almighty. And you think he ran out of ideas for you? So why do you live your life as though God has run out of ideas? Then God is thinking, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? You think God has run out of ideas? Moses did that one time. When God said, tell the children of Israel to gather. I will give them meat because they said they were tired of manna. That they wanted to eat meat. God now called Moses and said, tell them. I, will I mean, it amazed God. You can read it for yourself. Numbers chapter 11. The Bible says they were crying. Men, big men. People's fathers, mothers. They were crying that they were tired of manna. That they wanted to eat meat. Crying. So God said, okay, I will give them meat. Three to six million people. Six million Jews. Then in the midst of that, the Bible says they had a mixed multitude. They, were, they, they could not be numbered. They joined the children of Israel and joined with them. The mixed multitude. So God said he was going to give them meat to eat. God told Moses, tell them to gather on a particular day. He was going to visit them. <laughs> Moses said to the Lord, he said, he said to the Lord, he said, even if you decide to release the best hunters, how can you feed these people for one month? God said to Moses, is my hand wax short? Because Moses at the point was trying to limit God to say, God, ah, these people, they are too much. Oh. God, said, God said to Moses, Moses, do you, do you realize who, who you are talking to? Moses was almost becoming too familiar with God. So he forgot he was dealing with God. So God said, are you saying that my hands is wax short? Moses now started apologizing. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. Because Moses was lamenting. He said, oh God, kill me. Am I the one who gave birth to these people? Why are you giving me this burden? God says, tell them I will give them meat. Let them gather. I will feed them for one month. Every day they will be eating meat. They will even be tired of meat. Moses laughed. He said, oh God. <laughs> even if you release the best hunters, how can you do that? God said, is my hand wax short? And that is how many Christians today see God. You just said a sister that shared her testimony and how the Lord reversed her situation. But to her, he didn't look it. He didn't look it at all. Because the picture did not even look as though God was going to do anything about it. And it was as though God has run out of ideas. But see how the Lord even reversed the situation. In a beautiful way, without stress. They didn't have to call family members to come and settle them. Wisdom was just at work. Now, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Now, verse 17. Verse 16 says, Of every tree, every tree. But verse 17 says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Now, the question we will ask God Almighty is, Dear God, if you are instructing Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you are telling him the consequences of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that the day he will eat of it, he shall surely die. Then, dear God, why did you have to put that tree in the garden then? Dear God, why don't you just remove the tree from the garden? Put it somewhere else. So why did God have to put the tree in the garden? 
And the tree had a name. The name of the tree was what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So brothers and sisters, that tree was not even a bad tree in itself. As many Christians think. It was not a bad tree. Because it was a tree of knowledge of good. So you have, the, you have good knowledge. You have knowledge of knowing the difference between good and evil. Then it is not a bad tree at all. So, but now the question is this. Why did God even tell Adam not to eat of it? But yet he told him to dress the garden. So that means that he was even going to dress the tree. So God actually gave Adam the responsibility to even take care of the tree. As it were, brothers and sisters, as it were, brothers and sisters, here is a guy, a brother, he says he's in love with a sister. He wants to marry the sister. A Christian brother says he wants to marry a Christian sister. They are together, and yet he still goes to have sex with her even before marriage. He goes to have sex with her before marriage. And then they get married now, and then he's expecting that the lady will be faithful to him, or the lady is even expecting that the man will be faithful to him. Or they are even expecting that they will not have problems in their marriages. How can you not have problems? When the foundation is already destroyed. The Bible says it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So it was even a good tree. But the Lord says do not eat from it. Do not eat it. Do not eat it. That was what the Lord said. He says, do not eat it. He says, for in the day you shall eat it, you shall surely die. Now, brothers and sisters, look at verses 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate for him. The Lord said, he says, in the day, he said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helpmate. Now, notice something, brothers and sisters. He gave man an instruction first. He gave man responsibility first. Before the wife came on the scene. Before the wife came on the scene. And like we said earlier, this is the reason why it is wrong for you as a Christian to put your marriage first ahead of ministry. It is wrong for you to put your marriage first ahead of what God has called you to do. What comes first is what God has called you to do. Marriage comes secondarily. As a matter of fact, the reason why you are marrying that wife is to support what God has called you to do. And not to make her the ministry. Too many ministers have turned their wives to becoming the ministry. And so they say... They say, well, we need to make our wives happy so that she does not damage the ministry. Damage the ministry. Damage the ministry. You call yourself a wife. You marry a minister just to frustrate the ministry, to damage the ministry. Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid? And hey, brothers and sisters, it's amazing many things, the kind of things we even allow. It's amazing the kind of things many ministers even accommodate. Your wife is threatening you that she's going to destroy the ministry because you are not making her happy. Whereas she knows that the ministry came before you married her. So she's not taking the place of ministry. So she's not, she has not taken the place of God. What God has called you to do. You are not ignoring it to focus on the wife. Remember on the day of judgment, this wife will not be the one to defend you. And some ladies capitalize on that to say, well, after all, and this and that, you know, I, I play a vital part in the ministry. Are you not afraid to even talk to your husband that way? Or vice versa, the husband, maybe the wife is the one who is called into the ministry. And then the husband says, remember, I can destroy the ministry. You, husband, are you not afraid? Brothers and sisters, we need to know the truth. You may not like it, but that's the truth. And that is why, in terms of marriage, marrying a minister, you must, be, you, must be, you must be sure that you are called to marry a minister. If you are not called, you will be frustrated in the marriage. And it's unfortunate that many ministers are not telling people the truth. So it's not about admiring his shiny jacket to say, I like him, I like the way he preaches. Or I like her, I like the way she preaches. No, are you called to marry him? If you are not called, you will be frustrated though. 
Because it's even a greater disaster for him to even put you ahead of God. Notice here, God gave Adam a responsibility first before the wife came on the scene. And how come now you now convert the responsibility to now start coming second and then you are bringing your wife first? You say, no, marriage is the first ministry of a minister. Brothers and sisters, when you hear ministers talk that way, it, it, just give them time. It's only a matter of time. You see that marriage that they are trying to protect, it will crumble. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Brothers and sisters, the woman herself knows the purpose for which she's coming into that marriage for. She came to support the work of the ministry. That's the reason why you even married her. Maybe because she doesn't even understand. Then the question is this, how can you even marry somebody who does not even understand what God has called you to do? Maybe because you never told her before you married her. Maybe. So let her know now. A pastor friend of mine married a lady. Before he married the lady, he called the lady. He said, look, God has called me into ministry. My life is ministry. This is what God has called me to do. The lady said, no problem. I love you. I will stay with you. I don't know. For no matter what, I will stay. Then they got married. Few months after, the wife was now complaining. That I hardly see you. This and that. Then the man said to He said, but, did I, but I told you now. The lady said, but I didn't know it was going to be like that. The man said, you know. You must know. You can't change your mind now. And brothers and sisters, sometimes some ladies use this thing to trap the man and frustrate his call. And then before long, the man becomes a victim. And then you begin to wonder why Satan is attacking you. Because you have put the marriage ahead of the responsibility God gave you. There is an order here. Okay, if the marriage was that even important ahead of the ministry, God would have even brought the woman first before he gave Adam responsibility. But he didn't. He brought the responsibility first before the wife came. Now, does that mean that the man should not have time for the wife? No. Brothers and sisters, if you live by the word of God and you follow the guidance of the Spirit in accordance with the instructions God has given to us in His word, you will always have time for your family. If you find a minister of God who says he does not have time for his family, is a minister who is not living by the word. Because when you study the Bible, there was no place where all, that the, all those that the Lord used in ministry never had time for their families. They did. Brothers and sisters, how can you explain it? Jesus was traveling one day. He saw a man called Zacchaeus on the tree. He says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your home. One time Jesus saw a Pharisee. He had time to be visiting people. So how can you not come and say, as a minister, you don't have time for your family? You are wrong. You are going against scriptures because when you walk in line with God's word and you put God's things ahead first, you will, God will make up time for you. So it is wrong when you find a minister saying that when you are in ministry, you don't have time, you don't really have time for your family. It's a lie. It's a lie of Satan. And that minister is not sincere because he's not living by the word. But brothers and sisters, look at the other. God gave Adam a responsibility first. And the instruction was to Adam. God says, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day thou shalt eat it, thou shalt surely die. Now, brothers and sisters, that instruction was only given to Adam. It was not given to Eve at all. It was never given to Eve. Now, go to chapter 3, brothers and sisters. From verses 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. So, brothers and sisters, God actually made the serpent. And the serpent was a cattle. Now, the word subtle means clever. So, it will read, Now the serpent was more clever than any other beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now, and he said, who said? The serpent. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He's asking a question. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat 
of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, brothers and sisters, go to verses 9 of chapter 2. The Bible says, And out of the ground the Lord made, the Lord God made to grow, sorry, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, one, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. Now, Eve said to the, to the serpent, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, brothers and sisters, how many trees were in the midst of the garden? True, two. Two trees were in the midst of the garden. The tree of knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. Actually, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. These are the two trees. Now, notice what Eve said. Eve said, from verses 3 of chapter 3, he said, but of the fruit of the tree, the tree, she didn't say the trees. She said the tree. And there were two trees in the midst of the garden. But Eve said there were one. There was one. And yet the Bible says the tree of life was in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was also in the midst of the garden. But Eve is saying the tree. One tree. She didn't say the trees. She said one tree. Brothers and sisters. This is how Satan, this is what gives Satan the ability to know who you really are. When you lack perfect knowledge, Satan takes advantage of you. When you don't know what you should know, Satan will feast on your ignorance. He will barbecue you. There were two trees in the midst of the garden. Two trees. Eve said there was one. She was referring to only one. Whereas there were two trees. Can you see the lack of knowledge there? The lack of knowledge. You see why God has always lamented, my children are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There were two trees in the midst of the garden. He said, one. Verses 3 again of chapter 3. Verse 3 of chapter 3. He says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, brothers and sisters, go to, go to verse, go to chapter 2 again. Go to chapter 2, verses 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden, to dress it and to keep it. Now, look at what Eve said in chapter 3 of verses 3. Verse 3 of chapter 3. He says, The Lord said, You should not eat of the tree, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. But yet, chapter 2, verses 15, the Lord said, Dress it and to keep it. Eve said, God said, We should not touch it. You see, misinformation, brothers and sisters. Misinformation. And this is the problem today you have in the body of Christ. Too many, too much misinformation. Too many ministers who do not know are the ones preaching the gospel today. Too many. And they actually, they actually have genuine cause to preach the gospel. They really mean well, but they do not really have the perfect knowledge. And that is the reason for the error. And this is the reason why Satan is having a field day in the lives of so many Christians. Just like he did with Eve. Eve said, God said, we should not touch the garden, touch the tree. At first she said, one tree in the midst of the garden. And the Bible says there were two trees. Eve was referring to one. And there were two. If she had even said, God said, we should not touch the trees. We should not eat of the fruit of the trees. The servant would have asked her, which one? And God never told Adam not to eat from the tree of life. The only tree God instructed Adam not to eat from 
was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's all. He didn't say you should not, you should not eat from the tree of life. So they probably must have been eating from that tree. Or they probably didn't. But the Lord never told Adam never to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good. Uh, sorry. God never told Adam never to eat from the tree of life. He only said do not eat it. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the only tree. And there were two trees in the midst of the garden. Eve was addressing, referring to one. And then she went further to say, God said, they should not eat it, neither should they touch it. Whereas this serpent was there when the Lord said, dress and keep the garden. Dress and keep it. Now before, if you must dress something, you have to touch it. For you to dress something means that you have to touch it. And now Eve is saying, God says we should not touch it. Whereas God never said don't touch it. Brothers and sisters, this is how religion came about. This is how religion came about. Religion is when you add to what God did not say and you take from what God said. Jesus said, anyone who shall take out to what has already been written in the scriptures or take out from what has already been written in the scriptures shall not escape the judgment. He said that in the book of Revelations. He said that person shall even be cast into the lake of fire. If, if, Eve added, Eve did, if I, Eve did not even say what God said, she brought her own doctrine. She said, God said, don't touch it. Now, see what Satan did. Brothers and sisters, the problem of knowledge. The problem of knowledge is what the Lord is teaching us here. The problem of knowledge. The problem of knowledge. Too many Christians who do not know are the ones even causing the problem today in the body of Christ. They went to the, the best Bible colleges. They went to Bible seminaries. They are pastors, bishops, archbishops. But yet they don't know Jack. They don't know a flint of God's, God's plan for from, from mankind. They don't even know what it means to be born again. Nicodemus, the Bible says, was a doctor of the law. And he met Jesus. He met Jesus. John chapter 3, verses John, when you read John chapter 3, from verses 1, when you read down to 1 to, from verses 1 to 8, Jesus, Jesus was the first person to introduce to mankind the concept of being born again. Jesus was the first person to introduce it. No prophet introduced being born again. It was Jesus that first introduced it. Jesus was the first person to say, you must be born again. And brothers and sisters, we, I can't even understand why some Christians today, some folks, we can't even call them Christians. Some folks say, what do you mean this born again business self? This born again business self. Jesus was the first person to even say it, that you must be born again. They think it's just a human doctrine. They say this born again doctrine, say, this born again business self, this born again doctrine. Brothers and sisters, please turn your Bibles to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The word see there is from the Greek word understand. It means understand. He cannot understand the kingdom of God. Now look at verse 7. Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. So Jesus was the first person to introduce that doctrine. And notice, he didn't say it was optional. He didn't say it was optional. He didn't make it optional. He made it compulsory. He said, you must be born again. God was not, Jesus was not seeking your opinion. He was, not, he, he was not making a suggestion. He was giving an instruction. He said, you must be born again. So that you go to church doesn't mean you are born again. And if you are not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter whether you are a nice man. You always give money to charity. And Satan deceives you with that. He says you must be born again. God, does, Your opinion does not count in it. He says you must be. So it is, not, it is not a human concept. So how dare you come now to say this born again business self? Who are you to say that? When Jesus himself has said you must be, you are not saying this born again business. 
And later you now come and say, I fear God, I fear God. Who do you fear? You are deceiving yourself. You don't fear God. Please go back again to Genesis chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, why is the Lord teaching us this? Because you see, the problem of knowledge is the reason why many, God, many of God's children today are not making progress in their lives. They do not have the perfect knowledge of God's word. They lack it. And start to say, ministers. And so if you, if you have a minister who has a problem even with the knowledge of God's word, what do you expect him to teach? He will teach the wrong knowledge. And that's the reason for problems today. Do you know, even the issue of denomination is not scriptural. The concept of denomination, it is not in the Bible. There's no such thing as denomination. But who initiated that thing? Man. Man brought that doctrine called denomination. And so somebody says, which denomination do you belong? I belong to this denomination. I belong to this. No. In God, there is no denomination. The Bible calls all of us the body of Christ. But today, what do we have? Denomination. Oh, my denomination. In our denomination, we, this is in our denomination. What, is, what do you mean by in our denomination? The problem of knowledge. Now, brothers and sisters, see something. See what the serpent did. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now look at what the serpent now said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You know what the serpent was trying to say to the woman? He was saying to the woman, Don't mind God, God lied to you. So the serpent had the audacity to call God a liar. He said, to, he said that God was lying. That's what he did. He said God is lying. He said you shall not surely die. He said look at it. He said for God, God himself does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He says, God himself knows that you shall not surely die. But the only thing that will happen to you is that your eyes will be opened. Brothers and sisters, the Lord revealed something to me last night, last evening. Man was never meant to see. Man was created not to see with the physical eyes. Man was never created to see. The only thing man was created to see was to see God. Man was never created. Don't forget when God made man, the man and the woman, the man and the woman never knew anything evil. As it were, they were in, in God's perfect will for their lives. So they didn't know anything good. They didn't know anything evil. They were actually in God's perfect will. But the serpent himself knew the difference between good and evil. Because his, his knowledge was already corrupted. And so what Satan wanted to do was to corrupt the knowledge of Adam and Eve. That was what he wanted to do. Brothers and sisters, did you notice... The serpent did not go to meet Adam. The serpent actually went to Eve. Brothers and sisters, the people who suffer most, even in the body of Christ, are actually baby Christians. They are the ones people deceive the most. They are the ones ministers deceive a lot. You find ministers on TV, please send your donation. They will advertise one baby from Africa and say the baby is suffering. They will show you a picture and say, please send your donations. How do you know that is what they are really doing? Meanwhile, there is somebody next to you who is hungry. You say, no, I'll send my money to TBN. Is there anything wrong in sending money to TBN? No, there's nothing wrong, brothers and sisters. Please don't get this wrong. There's nothing wrong. If the Lord lays it in your heart to do it, do it. But people, brothers and sisters, 
Ministers of the gospel are very dangerous people. They are very dangerous people. And they can be very deceptive. And that's the truth. They will either tell you the truth for those who want to let you know the truth or they will lie to you and keep you in darkness so that you can keep coming to them. The choice you are going to make, what do you want in your life? Desire to know the word of God for yourself. That's the reason for this Bible class, where you can actually know the word of God for your life. And nobody will be tossing you to and fro. Nobody will be tossing you to and fro. You will know exactly what God wants you to do. You will not be in the dark. Eve was in the dark. And Adam actually kept Eve in the dark. Is the serpent said to the woman, your eyes will be open. Your eyes will be open. As it were, most of you today, most of you women who are married to your husbands today that is giving you problems, somebody introduced this husband to you. So as it were, that, lady, that person who introduced that man that you now finally married is now like the serpent who opened your eyes, knowing the difference between good and evil. But when the problems began, the person who even introduced you to that person is no longer there to, anywhere to be found. Can't you see it? They say, come to this party. Who knows? You might just meet a man now who will just marry you. So you went to the party. And sure enough, you met a brother. One wonderful brother. In quote, you liked him. So you married him. And today he's beating you every day. What about the person who introduced you to him? Who took you to the party? Where's the person now? The person is no longer... See, brothers and sisters, the problem of knowledge. Be careful. It is not every place you go to. It is not everything you should desire to know. It is not everything you should desire to know. Have you not noticed, even an average blind man, an average blind man, there's something beautiful about their spirits. Because they don't even see evil around them. God never intended for man to see with the physical eyes. God never made man to see. The only person God made man to see was God himself. The serpent has always been there. Adam never gave him any recognition. Neither the woman. The Bible says it was a serpent that came to the woman and had a discussion with the woman. And, the innocent, and in the innocence of her mind, she was saying what she thought was right. Not knowing that she was being deceived. Now, notice something, brothers and sisters. Verses 5. Let's read from verses 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw, please mark that expression, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. But the tree has always been there. The tree has always been there. How come this was not the first time she was seeing it? And yet she talked about the tree to the serpent, that the Lord told them not to eat of it. Now, we read that the Bible says the woman, when she saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Brothers and sisters, you see, desires. Desires will drive you to your knowledge. Your desires will determine the kind of knowledge that will come to you. The tree has always been there. How come the woman never saw it? So what made this woman not see it? The new knowledge. The new knowledge that the serpent gave the woman. As it were, somebody has always been living in your house. He has always been there. Serving you. And here you are having a problem with your husband. And then somebody now told you, look at your houseboy now, or look at this brother that is living with you now. 
Eh, why don't you just enjoy yourself with him now? Ignore your husband. But the brother has always been there. But that new knowledge that your friend gave you was what you now took advantage of. And now, you now fail. You now went into a bigger mess from where you were before into a greater disaster. As it were, where you walk, figures were coming to you. You always do your work. Somebody now said, well, why don't you just tamper with these figures so that you can even make some money for yourself? You now started tampering because somebody advised you the problem of knowledge. The problem of knowledge. The Bible says when she saw, when she saw, how come she saw it? Was she blind before? Was she, was she blind before? The Bible says when she saw, she saw. The word saw there means she realized. She realized it. So she made a realization by reason of the new knowledge she has just received from Satan. We will continue in the evening. We will continue in the evening. The Lord says to stop. Let's thank the Lord. Let's bless his name. Master Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank the Lord. I'd like you to to make this declaration for 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 that person that wants to be born again. You know, I like you to say this. Say, Oh Lord God, thank you for sending your son Jesus. I believe he died for me. He died for me. And he was raised for my justification. I was raised for my justification. And at this moment, at this moment I receive everything. remission of sins. Remission. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. And at this moment, I welcome eternal life into my spirit. Into my spirit. I am born again. I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, sister. You are now born again. You have you are born again. God can call you his child and you can call God your father. Amen. 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 I'll all right, congratulations. Alright. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, does anyone have any question? Please tell us your name and where you are oh. calling from. Oh, this is the Sakisha from Georgia. Okay. Um, the first question you had was like, why did God put the tree in the garden then? If He knew, you know, He left His place there then. Yes. And I think I didn't get the answer. Why was it? Okay. Was this for uh, Okay, we'll give you the answer. Uh, All right. Okay. All right. Now, um, the reason why that happened, first of all, don't forget, um, I know that uh, you, you've not attended one of our previous classes. Uh, you know, you, you just started recently in our class. But in our previous classes, we, f we, we took a class where we discussed Lucifer and the fallen angels. And in the class, or oh, and in that class where we discussed, where the Lord taught us on Lucifer, the Lord took time to t teach us on his origin, the origin of Lucifer, how he was, where he was, and how he will end up. And in that class, uh, we took various Bible, uh, several Bible scriptures to study that Lucifer was God's, Lucifer was God's vice regent in the earth. You understand? Lucifer was God's vice-regent in the earth. And Lucifer 
was put here in the earth by God to to oversee the earth on his behalf. All right, Zakisha, are you listening? All right. So God put Lucifer here on his behalf to oversee the earth. And Lucifer because he was lifted in because he was lifted in pride because of his beauty um when he said what he said, that he will exalt his throne above, above the stars of God and he will be like the Most High, God decided to knock him out by destroying the earth. Alright, Sister Kishav. Alright? Please, listen carefully. Please, listen carefully. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. Turn your Bibles to Genesis. Let's, let's show you something. So that you can understand the context. And you can see what. Now, Sakisha, please, can you can you read for us Genesis chapter 1, verses 1? Just only verses 1. Alright. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. Yes. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Did you see that? He says, In the yes. beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now read verses two. And the earth was and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now did you see that? Now brothers and sisters, uh, for those in the who have attended previous classes, understand what we're about to reveal now. But for those who are probably joining us for the first time, you get to see something. He says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So, it, there was a beginning. And in that very beginning, God created the heavens, and then he created the earth. Now, but the striking thing is, see something in verses 2. It says, and the earth was without form and void. Now, how can the earth be without form and void, when verses 1 already says that God created the heavens and the earth? Anything that you create must have form. True or false? True. And then he now tells us in verses 2 that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. But then he tells us in verses 1 of chapter 1 of Genesis that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Brothers and sisters, Sister Kisha, please listen carefully for as many that are online. The earth... In the beginning, when God, God, okay, let's put it this way. God did not create the heavens and the earth in six days, as many Christians think. So when you read in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, he never told us the number of days. It was the earth that was recreated in six days. It was the earth. So what you read in verses when you what you read from verses 2 down to Genesis chapter 26 is a recreation of the earth. The earth had been created before. And that earth that was created before was the earth that Lucifer was in charge of. He was God's vice regent here in the earth. Now this will amaze what we, amaze you now as Akisha. Adam and Eve were not the first Adam was not the first man to be made by God. Adam was the first man to be made in God's own image and likeness. But Adam was not the first man to be made. God created men before. And those were the people that Lucifer was overseeing on behalf of God. And so when Lucifer got lifted up in pride, now go to Jeremiah, Sister Kisha, go to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 4. 
Jeremiah chapter 4. Says Akisha, say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jeremiah chapter 4. Zakisha, are you there in Jeremiah chapter 4? Yes. Now read verses 3. Alright, Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3. Sorry, verse 23, and I mean. Verse verses 23, I mean. I'm sorry, verses 23. Okay. Alright. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 23. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Does that remind you of something? Yes. What does it remind you of? In the beginning. In the beginning, Genesis. No, not in the beginning. Verses 2 of Genesis chapter oh. 1. Where yes. it says the earth was without form and what? Void. And void. That's the same thing here. Because the only time the earth was formless and was void was where? Was when? Genesis chapter 1. In the yes. beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verses 2, right? Now, let's go yes. Go ahead. Read verses 24 into 25. All right. Jeremiah. Continue, yes. continue. Yes. Verses 24. Continue now. Verses 24 to 25. I beheld the mountains and low, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld and low, there was no man, and all the birds of the heaven were fled. Did you see that? He says, I behold, I beheld, and lo, there was no man. There was no man. There was no man. And all the birds of the earth were fled. Now, read verses 26. You see something now. Okay, verse 26. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the steps thereof were broken. Down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. Oh, can you see that? So we can see why the earth was without form and void that we read in Genesis and there was darkness. It was simply because God was angry. Are you following? It was because God was angry. So now when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, now go back to Genesis chapter 1. From verses 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So there was a creation before. So verses 2 now says, And the earth was without form. So something happened to make the earth to be without form and void. And that thing was what we just read now in Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 23 to 26. And it said it was caused by God. It happened because God was angry. Who made God to be angry? Now, notice something, says Akisha, in Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 26. He says, I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities were broken down. So there were cities. There were cities. At first, he says in verses uh, 25, he says, there was no man. But now he says, the cities were broken down. So there were men who built cities. You hear science talk about homo sapiens, the evolution of man. They talk about all those things. These were the men who built cities. That Satan was in charge of. Are you following this, Akisha? Okay, okay. Now, go, go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter... Isaiah chapter 14. So, Sister Kisha, you read for us from verses 12 to... From verses 12 to... 16. Verses 12 to 17. All right, go ahead. I said chapter 14, verses 12 to 17. Please read. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. 
I said chapter 14, verses 12 to 17, chapter 12. How art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the Lord. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be left more high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sight of the sea. They, verse 16, they shall, oh, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this a man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdom? Chapter 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities, therefore, there are the open mouth house of the prisoner. Did you see that? Prisoner. Yes. Oh. Did you see that? Yes. So, so, say, this was what... Now, notice something. Go to verses 13. Notice something Satan said in his heart. He says, I will ascend into heaven. So, he was not in heaven. Okay. As many Christians think. They think that Satan was leading choir in heaven. No, brothers and sisters, Satan never led any choir in heaven. And Satan en enjoys it when, when many Christians think that he led choir in heaven. He never did. He never did. He was God's vice regent in the earth here. Yeah. He was ruling over men that God made. In quote, as it were, he was God's initial right hand man. Because the Bible says he was an anointed cherub. Go to the Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 28. Since Akisha has taken us to into another sermon. No, 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 it's okay. It's the right thing to do. It, 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 well, it's good. At least so that we can know, know the truth. Right? He says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes, the truth shall make you free. Ezekiel 28. You will see something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, Ezekiel chapter 28. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, now read from verses 11 to 17. All right. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 11 to 17. Chapter 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of them, take up a lamentation upon the king of Cyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou filmest up the sun, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been hidden the garden of God. Every precious underworld was like covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, The sapphire, the emerald, and the how uncle? Tablet. Okay. Come on, come. The workmanship of the tablet and of thy pipe was prepared in day in the day of thou was created. Thou art the anointed chariot, the covered, and I have set peace for. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in the rain from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in faith. By the multitude of the Methodists, they have filled the midst of sin with violence, and thou hast seen, therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. All covering shut up, shut up from the midst of the stones of fire. Chapter 17. Thine height was lifted, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted the wisdom by reason of the brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that thou may behold, that they may behold thee. Oh. Did you see that? Now, notice something in verses 12. He says, King of Tyros. Who is he talking about? Lucifer. Lucifer was the king of Tyros. He was the one overseeing the earth on behalf of God. You understand? He got lifted up in pride yeah. because of his beauty. All right? Now, brothers and sisters, um, 
when God dis made this decision that he was going to destroy Lucifer, what God did was to create man. Now, now go back to Gen go to Genesis now, chapter 1, verses 26. Let's see something in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Sister Kisha, now read to us Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. Alright, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. And God said, Let us make man in, man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now read verses 27. Read the first line. Read the first line. So God created man in his own image. Did you see that? In the in, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, God created him in the image of God created him, he him. Male and female created he, he him. Now notice something. Did you notice that he said God created man in his own image? Because you see, he men lived before who were never created in God's own image. So what you read in Genesis is actually a creation. So when you hear Christians say, God created the heavens and the earth in six days, it is not true. God only created, recreated the earth in six days. Alright? Now, why did God not make man in his own image? Now, look, look at what he said in verses 28. And God blessed them, and God said, be fruitful. You know, and then God pronounced the blessings. If you notice, and he said, and let him have dominion over everything. Now, the reason why God did that was to train man. That was why he put him in the garden to dress the garden. To train man. What was he training man for? So that man will be the one to pronounce judgment on Lucifer. And before that will happen, man would have been trained enough, ready, for him to not eat of the tree of the knowledge good and evil. So God was actually preparing man for that. It was God who put it there. It was a tree Adam was going, supposed to eat so that, he, so that he, would be able, he would be able to pass judgment on Lucifer, knowing the difference between good and evil. Because when Adam was created, Adam never knew anything evil. Because you see, Lucifer, if God had passed direct judgment on Lucifer, Lucifer would say, God, you are cheating. You are cheating. It's because you are God and all that. So God had to create man, one who never knew what happened. Can you see that? So that was the reason why. So God put that tree there for man. But the time was not right. There was the right time that was to come. For man to be ready to eat of that tree. And man was not ready. And he ate it. And now you begin to see why Lucifer was very keen. And eager in making. Oh, of course keen it also means eager. Why Lucifer was eager to see that. Man fell by eating of that fruit. Why? He wanted to delay the judgment. Because he knew sooner or later, Adam was going to be the one to pronounce judgment. So he wanted to delay the judgment. That was why he made man to eat. And then they fell. So Adam lost his authority. And then Lucifer now became the god of this world. Adam, as at this time, was the god of the world, of this world. But when he sold his authority to Lucifer, he lost it, and Lucifer became the god of the of this world. Then the Bible now says Jesus is the second and the last Adam. Jesus now came in the form of Adam. That was why Jesus was now born in the form of man, and he defeated Satan, and took the keys of death from him, and now gave it to us. So we believers now, every born again Christian is higher than Lucifer, but not every born again Christian knows this. Not every born again Christian has this knowledge. So that was the reason why God put that tree in the, in the garden. It was actually for man's use, but the timing was not right. Sister Kisha, you have a stove in your house, don't you? You do have a stove in your house, and you have babies around you. Would you say because of the babies around you, you will take the stove out of your house? No. But you just be guiding them. And if, anytime you even see them near, near the stove, you say, no, don't go, don't go there. It will burn you. By the time will come, you even when they walk towards the stove, you are not afraid anymore. True or false? True. So it was, it was, it was a subject of timing. That's why God, like in this Bible class now, the Lord is teaching us, training us. Because a time will come where each one of us in the Bible class will be sent out.
you you become missionaries, reaching out to people. Some of you will even become pastors of churches, fellowships. That's God's plan. Man, so that you can teach others. But the time is not yet. So he's training you. Like he's training all of us now. Including OC2. We're all under training. Amen. So Sister Fisher, I hope we've answered your question. Yes. You are amazed. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Why are you amazed? Oh, you say you didn't know that. Okay. Okay. So now you... I didn't know that there was a lot of art before the art. I knew that was created in six days. Yes. Yes. I didn't know there was another earth, but See, it, amazingly, it, it, I'm not fit in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> it, uh, it's amazing that we, we don't have the recordings on on Lucifer. There was a time we took a class. I think, how many days, for those of us, Sister Grace, how many days did it take us? When we went through, we did an exhaustive study on Lucifer and the fallen angels. It took us about two days. It took us about two days, right? Morning and night, morning and night, right? Afternoon and evening, afternoon and evening. So we had four sessions to discuss Lucifer. We perused the scriptures in the Bible. We even went to Revelations and studied and all that. But it's amazing that we don't even have it on record. It's, it's, it's amazing. I thought we did. I thought we did. I thought we did. Wow. 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 Maybe if the Lord permits again, we can we will study it again. Again. So that we can have it on record for the benefit of others who may like to have that knowledge and play it over and over again. All right. Thank you, Sister Kisha. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Any other questions, brothers and sisters? All right, on this note, um, Sister Kisha, you pray for God's children and dismiss the class. Brothers and sisters, we will meet in the evening. God bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you even for this class. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.